Hello there, welcome to episode 18 of Nevermind the Bullens. My name is Mike Peters, this is your bite-sized Everton podcast and vodcast. Uh, with immediate reaction to the win over Brighton, which is our seventh win on the bounce in all competitions. Uh, first time we've managed that uh, since 1987, we all remember that year. And also, uh, seven straight wins at the start of the season, uh, since uh, for the first time since 1894 95 and ironically the eighth game in that season a merseyside derby there you go 13 goals scored in three successive home games for everton since the first time since october and november 2007 which was against larissa birmingham city and that 7-1 mauling of sunderland that we all remember so fondly and also apparently our sixth uh, successive win in live televised games in the uk and we've never done that before all of those courtesy of steve johnson of uh, everton results um but again, uh, another terrific win. I mean, we can't, you know, not really much to complain about. We're Evertonian, so I'm sure I'll find something uh, to talk about today. Um, you know, obviously it was going to be a tough game today against Brighton because, uh, you know, a few bodies missing and we've got a few more bodies missing now. Uh, we'll discuss that a little bit later on. But firstly, you must give uh, props to uh, Gilfie Sigurdsson. Uh, my brother texted me during the uh, game and went, who's this number 10 that we've got playing for us? And I said, well, he's rejuvenated. It's like, and I only know this because I've watched the film for the first time this week. I'm currently working through the MCU um, films and uh, watch Captain America, First Avenger. Uh, this is my stepson, my eldest stepson that said to me that he wanted to do this. So I said, right, I'll do this. And I can only compare Gilfie Sigurdsson to, like, last season. He's like the Captain America uh, before he's injected with the serum. And then then he's after it this season. He's been, every time he's been on the pitch, he's been like Captain America bouncing around Brooklyn and, you know, fighting Hydra. It's, it's an extraordinary transformation. It's just It's just great to... We know he's a good player. We've always known that Gilfie Sigurdsson's a good player, but it's really great to see him full of energy and impacting games again today. He was, he was absolutely terrific. Uh, I must give a mention, Seamus Coleman was outstanding as well. Abdullah Dekore really stepped up. I mean, he's been... We know he's been effective if you've seen any of the games so far. Um, he has been effective, but today he took it up a notch. He, and, you know, he took that responsibility of uh, with no Allen um, and, uh, you know, and no Andre Gomez. He really stepped up uh, a bit as well. Um, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, well, what, what can we say that, you know, that we haven't already said? I mean, you know, you're starting to run out of superlatives, really, aren't you? But I loved that goal today. I really did, because that was a classic Everton goal. A classic Everton centre-forwards goal. Great cross from Gilfie Sigurdsson, hung up the ball beautifully. And uh, Brighton, helpfully, uh, displaying an object lesson of how not to do zonal marking on the basis of those uh, first two goals, because uh, it was pretty awful. Um, but he's got his goal, nine and six now. And, I mean, it'd be an absolute travesty if he didn't appear for England uh, at some point over the course of uh, that very welcome international break from, from Everton's point of view. Um, with the the few injuries that we've that we've got, um, James Rodriguez again. You know, I, I just think having a, you know a genuine, a bona fide world class player uh, in your team, I think by for any team is going to make a difference. And just you know, he got his two goals. He wasn't quite as, sort of as. Uh, a, a sort of his all action in terms of influencing the game but again just little passes here and there and then he gets on the end of things and it, it wins us the game it makes the difference in the end uh, Tom Davis, I have to say I thought that was his best game in a blue shirt for quite a while probably about 12 months really and I think the thing today with Tom Davis for me was the fact that there was a clearly defined role for him in the team he was given a job to do and even when he went to left back uh, sorry to right back I should say after Seamus Coleman went off again just went about his job, made a fantastic block um, to save Jordan Pickford's blushes of a fashion. Um, he will we'll discuss very shortly. And also, uh, got to give uh, a props to Yeri Mina as well, because he got better as the game uh, progressed. He was partly at fault for the uh, for the first Brighton goal for their equaliser, but he made three or four really telling uh, interceptions, blocks, crucial blocks. Um, and obviously, his... A place is going to be under serious pressure now with uh, Mason Holgate will be back obviously hopefully at some point in the next few weeks hopefully after the international break but also uh, with the impending signing of, uh, of of Ben Godfrey as well so that's going to create real competition for places I haven't seen enough of Ben Godfrey really I mean I know he obviously was one of Brighton's better sorry Norwich's better players uh, last season um, but obviously you know we've got to trust the scouting uh, the, the recruitment this season has been 
this summer has been excellent and hopefully he will be uh, another piece in the jigsaw and, and creates real competition for places and extra defensive cover as well uh, particularly with John Joe Kenny being out for the next uh, sort of four weeks uh, with uh, his ankle injury that he sustained against West Ham uh, the other night we've got to get on to Jordan Pickford um, appropriately dressed like a, a whoopee cushion today because he dropped one um, that first goal was I mean he's made a few howlers this season uh, and going back over the you know there's been a number the stats are rolling out on Twitter during the game today about how he's made 11 uh, sort of key mistakes uh, since since he signed actually uh, in in 2017 um, and to me I mean that today was just such a simple one that's the worst one of the lot I mean the, the mistake against the mistakes against Fleetwood were bad enough but this was worse it was just so. You know, all he had to do was catch the ball. It was, the ball doesn't, I know it was, I know the conditions in Liverpool today were appalling. It's, you know, I could look outside my window and it's still chucking it down with the rain. But I'm sorry, the England goalkeeper, you know, you've, you've got to, it's such such a simple thing to do. Anybody would expect to catch that and be disappointed if they didn't catch that ball. There was no pace on it, he just came off the ground and he's just completely fumbled it. And the thing with Jordan Pickford is, for me, it's about concentration, particularly these mistakes he's made this season. Because the two against Fleetwood, he's had very little to do before that. Same again today. He had nothing to do, really, for that first 40 minutes. And that's clearly the issue. Because then when he's called upon, he's not, he's not, he's not with it, seemingly. There's, there's something missing there. And I know it's difficult for goalkeepers to concentrate. And that's a key sort of uh, attribute of goalkeepers that are top quality world class goalkeepers who can play in successful teams where they're not going to be called upon huge amounts but when they are their concentration levels haven't dropped to me his are and that needs fixing um that's something obviously that's a mental thing, and that needs to be worked on with whoever I mean it could be Leighton Baines he works on with that with you know he's the professional development coach could be him uh, amongst another, you know sports psychologist whatever you want to call as long as somebody can help him with this um, then that you know that clearly is an area of deficiency that needs rectifying in his game um, and then you know it, the mistake later on where the ball came in from um, or supposed mistake going to Ian Dark and Stephen McManaman on commentary from Solly March the, I, I don't know I mean you know a bit difficult when the ball is coming in from that side he's, try, he's trying to push it away or he's punched it and then I mean how are you supposed to push that behind him to go out towards the, the corner the other corner flag push it away like that I'm not entirely sure I mean he's he's a goalkeeper he's not a contortionist so I don't know but Tom Davis does save his bacon he does push it back into the, the path of Neil Morpé and, and Tom Davis gets in his way but that's what you need you know your defenders uh, to do um, injuries again hopefully you know as I said, this is a very appropriately timed international break for Everton uh, because obviously hopefully Richarlison can recover from that ankle knock. Alan from his uh, knock, apparently he will be back after the international break and hopefully Seamus Coleman's uh, hamstring tweak is literally that and that it's not going to affect him uh, in the run-up to the to the derby in a couple of weeks' time. If you have to miss a couple of internationals, hey, so be it. So, you know, we've got to... Uh, but it was good to see that the other players that came in today really did a job. Alex Awobi was his usual self in terms of came in, just was giving the ball away too easily. His passing was a bit off to start with, but then, you know, two, is, was instrumental in the third and fourth goals. Lovely assist for the third one, lovely cut back, really intelligent. That And that's what we want to see from him. Um, and it's so frustrating when you just get that too much of the other side of him, which is what we've seen since he arrived at Goodison a year ago. I've uh, already mentioned Ben Godfrey, of course, you know, so that's going to add extra competition for places and extra body in the squad, if, if, if nothing else. And will we see anybody else uh, come in uh, between now and the uh, close of the transfer window on Monday, who knows? Unlikely, and I hope you know there might be some outgoings. Um, Moyes Keane, apparently not one of them, which is which is good for me because otherwise that means we need to bring in another striker because we'd only have one. Uh, and also, uh, lastly, uh, a mention for Spirit of the Blues. Fantastic to see it be the most downloaded tune in the UK this week, but somehow only get to number sixty-five on the top forty. 
who said it was the only chart that counts. But there we go. Um, so I have been playing it on the radio this week, and that's terrific fun. And you can buy, apparently, the uh, vinyl version, blue vinyl version, for £10 plus £2.50 postage and packing from uh, Everton for uh, and all those prop- uh, profits for that going to Everton in the community. So international break, but we'll do an addition uh, during that break, building up towards the derby in a couple of weeks. But until then, Everton top of the league, as I record this, everything's brilliant. Come on, you blues. <laughs> 